Time for what? Time for what? Experience in college. Time for reinforcement. Time for liftoff! Where nothing is impossible unless you think it is impossible. It's college, impossible. college. It's impossible. my college scholarship. Yes. Well, college ran by real fast. You hung in with the best college. Touchdown! First time for everything. Well, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Let's do this thing. Genius, let's do this thing! Welcome to the show, everyone. Yes, yes, it is that time. No, no, no more envelopes. It's all about opening up your portals, your emails. But we're going to do this with our wonderful guest, Isabel. Welcome back to the show, Isabel. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. Now, how was it for you and your classmates? Because you always hear these stories like, oh, the big envelope, small envelope. Do you wish there were still these envelope stories or you're like, uh, who, who cares? I just want to know. You know what? A part of me does wish that there were envelopes. It feels like there's more anticipation and it feels like, oh, you're waiting to open up your letter in the mail. And now it's just like, oh, you got an email and you see it right away. You know, did you get accepted? Did you get denied? So, yeah, part of me wishes that there was a letter, but also it's a lot more convenient to be able to open your phone and just see exactly what your decision was. And so I guess that's a good thing about it. Now, did you or some of your classmates open it, up your phones and find out information in the middle of class? Actually, I think a few of them did. I remember um, on UC Santa Barbara's decision day, we were all kind of waiting. And I remember, but I ended up going home and receiving my decision there. And some of my classmates stayed after school. But I didn't really feel like doing that because who knows how everyone's going to react. And I don't want to react wrong in front of people if, you know. No, no, no. I, I don't understand why colleges don't do it the end of the day, 5 p.m., regardless of where they are in the United States. See, and I so, completely agree. I, I don't understand that. Can't you just have one late day and then let your employees come in later on Monday? But OK, so you have been amazing uh, where you said that you are going to share us some of your results from your school. So we have a laundry list of some great schools that were lucky enough for you to submit an application. So let us know what the results are. All right. So starting off with my most challenging schools that I applied to. I would start off with UC San Diego, which I did not get accepted into there. And then UC Santa Barbara, I got waitlisted, which was disappointing, but it's okay. At Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, which was one of my top schools, I actually got accepted. So that was crazy. And I actually um, committed there a few weeks ago. Whoa, look, we we lost the suspense there, Isabel. How is everyone supposed to figure out? Oh my gosh, my bad. I'm just too excited. She's, you know what? We could see that excitement in your voice. We could, we could literally visualize that big smile. All right, all right. So let's keep going down with the list. So San Diego State also accepted me. And then moving Ooh. on to like some other challenge schools, I got accepted into Cal State Fullerton and I got waitlisted at UC Santa Cruz. And then um, moving kind of down my list for schools that were kind of in the range of possibly getting into, maybe not. Um, I think, uh, let's see what's next. Cal Poly Pomona, I got accepted. And then UC Davis, I was definitely not accepted there, um, which that's okay. And then at Oregon State, I also got accepted. And then moving back, I'm trying to think of the other schools. I know I applied to Colorado State University. I got accepted there. I got accepted into the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. I got accepted into Sonoma State and Cal Poly Humboldt. Awesome. And, and what happened with I, Riverside? Oh, I never ended up applying to UC Riverside. No Highlanders for you in their lives. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. interesting, no. though, Anna. Yeah. Yes. that I ended up getting an email a little while ago from UC Merced. And it looks like UC Merced is still opening applications for some students, which I thought that was really interesting because I didn't apply there. And they're emailing me saying that I can still submit an application there. Fantastic. Yeah. So what happens is, so, so let's kind of look at what happened. But before we do that, drum roll, everyone. I don't care whether you're across the nation <laughs> or around the world. Drum roll, please. Congratulations. Congratulations, Isabel. You've been accepted to college and you're going to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Go Mustangs. Woo! I am so excited. I can't even believe that I got accepted into there. It makes me feel so so accomplished. And 
I just feel so surprised and so happy that even though everything didn't work out exactly how I pictured it to, I I just feel like I really am going to be where I'm supposed to be. I feel like I college is such a crazy thing with applications and everything. And after going through all of that, I feel like Cal Poly San Luis Obispo is where I belong. I feel like I am going to love it there. No, it's it becomes a gut feeling, right? Like you look at all the stats and oh, look at all these employers that fly in or how it's a college town or it's you know far away from home, but not that close from home. It's something different, but it really becomes a gut instinct. And there are certain parts that you can't control, right? The dollar sign or the scholarship sign or just the competitive nature that's out there, you know? And so before we go into the journey, I just want to let everyone know because, right, because some people go, wait wait a minute, you got waitlisted at UC Santa Cruz, but how did you get, like, wait, UC Merced will still take your application, but you got waitlisted at UC Santa Barbara, but, right, a lot of confusing information, right, that's out there. I mean, do you feel like yourself and other seniors are very confused, like how this process works? I still am very confused, and I still have so many questions. Uh, let's deal with your questions first, and then I'll fill it in with just some overall review, because I actually went to a conference, because it's an interesting time if you're an adult and all school's done, and it could be a very scary time uh, for those starting the application process. So ask away. Yeah, absolutely. So Anna, my first question is, I have accepted my offer, my um, admission offer at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, but do I now have to decline my offers formally from every single school or do I just not accept? So the professional thing to do is to let the other school knowing I'm not going to go. So pretend you there's somebody else at UC Santa Barbara where you were waitlisted at that said, hey, thank you for accepting me, but I'm going to choose the community college route because I, it's a lot cheap. So that gives that waitlist person an edge of getting in there. So the sooner the school knows, but that's just courtesy, like just think about a job interview, right? So the places that did not accept you, no. If you didn't confirm your wait list, no. But if you've been accepted, it's not required, but it's courtesy. Just send them a simple email to admissions at collegename.edu and say, thank you so much for my offer, but I decided to go to another campus. And you can let them know. It's good information for schools like let's say like it's out of state schools like Oregon State University. Like, oh, how did we lose someone like Isabel? Like, well, they offer a WUI scholarship, but it was it's really competitive. There's only like I think I can't re- don't quote me on this, but like I remember speaking to the representative. They said only like about eight or ten percent of out of state students get that wooey scholarship right for that yeah that I, remember, big amount. I remember them saying that too yeah and so and there are certain things that they want to give but they just can't so that's the courtesy to doing that um and then just for for those if you don't know your sir deadline the student intention registration is for one campus which is due may 1st so if isabel didn't put her deposit for cal Poly san luis obispo cal Poly, you are so lucky uh, then what ends up happening, she'll lose that spot. So, so that was great that you were ready to deposit at one campus already. What's your next question? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, I have some kind of general questions about kind of where to go once you do accept that admission offer. And so right now I'm kind of in the middle of working on my housing application, right? Because I want to have priority. I'm not, I'm not trying to get stuck in the worst dorm possible because I waited until the end of April to apply, um, which is kind of what it's looking like right now. So what are some other things that I can do to kind of get ahead of the game? Every housing application is different. If so, get that deposit in there. If you're already committed to the school, you have to put a deposit. Usually it's, it's uh, the range of the price is a little bit different. It's a couple of hundred dollars. It go towards the re- all the amount that you need to pay. So put that deposit in ASAP. But if your housing application says, oh, well, give me your housing deposit and your rank order of your campus, then you want to do a little bit of the research. So every housing application does have a website. Some are really thorough, like they'll give you the square footage and the layout. Some will give you hardly any information. So you just want to put it in as soon as possible because every campus has a campus like, oh, this was built in the 1960s and it smells like that. 
Yes, they exist. I don't know why mm-hmm. people keep using carpet and they don't change it. Steam clean people. Steam clean makes a big difference. I <laughs> trust me. I've been <laughs> in dorms where I smelled it like, oh my God, this smells better, worse than when I went to college. That um, is so funny. No, um, unfortunately, it's so true. So, <laughs> and it's yeah. it's hard, right? And some will have air conditioning, some won't. And then here's the thing is when you're thinking about housing is, okay, are you the kid that, I want to roll out of bed and roll my and go to my classes. So usually they're going to be the older dorms, but you're closer to the center of campus. The newer dorms and they're there everywhere because more and more students are going to college. That's why it's so competitive are going to be further away, but it feels like more luxury. So you got to know your personality and what's a priority for you. Also, Absolutely. yeah. And also every dorm is a little bit different. Like um, I actually just visited UC Merced. That's like, oh, you could get four people in a dorm. It's like four is a lot with, and that's not sweet style. It's a traditional dorm with, you know, two bunk beds, four closets, and there's a community bathroom. Or do you want to have a suite? Suite sometimes is uh, four people with a shared bathroom, you know? So every place has different, there may be a huge lounge area for the whole floor, some not. Some will be co-ed, some won't. Uh, Some will have themed uh, or lifestyle dorms, like basically like, oh, for everyone who's one major or a certain affinity group. So the key thing is fill out the application, put a deposit, and if they don't ask you to rank it, just do that first. If they ask you to rank the schools, do that. And the, there will be a survey of who are you all about? Okay, I feel sorry for my son. He has a uh, roommate that puts an alarm at three o'clock in the morning. Oh my gosh. That sucks booty, right? Okay. <laughs> so be brutally honest uh, about how your social life is. Yeah, you know what I mean by my social life. I'm winking right now. Yeah, your social life, your <laughs> bed. Are you a slob? Are you a neat freak? Does things have to smell good? The campus will do the best they can. And I'll be honest, I did get an ugly dorm. Um, I still remember the rust around the showers. Thank God for flip-flops. But I was so worried about my roommate. And like you, I just like, okay, whoever I get, I'm like, I'm going to just tell him I'm the boss. It was the sweetest person in the world. Till this day, was still the sweetest person ever. I um, regretted not keeping in contact with that person. My bad was going through stuff. But but that's something that I uh, would definitely recommend. Be brutally honest. Don't be like, oh, I'll just deal with it. You don't want to deal with it. It doesn't be, make it a happy adventure. Um, on there. And also, if you put in your uh, dorm request sooner, all that stuff, if you're a type of person who's not last minute, so my son got what is a last minute person and he got someone who got changed over mid semester. That means something went wrong. <laughs> so, with their RA. So, uh, if you get last minute, you get the leftovers. You want to be there for the main course. Smart thinking. I will make sure to consider that when I think about when I'm going to finish that application. And remember, if you do get stuck in situation, there is a RA, a residential um, assistant that's there to help you out. And then you're just there for a couple of semesters. And then if something happens, then you could ask to switch to a different room. But but usually most of the time things do work out, right? Or at least yeah. as long as you respect each other's spaces, like you're not boarded up there um, anymore. Other questions? For sure. um, as far as that goes, I can't really think of any that come to mind. Those are my two big ones that I've been thinking about. But other than that, I don't really have any off the top of my head. Well, if you are a senior and you're already depositing, you've got that matrimony already, and you're on the altar and you're ready to say, I do. Don't forget, there's some legal paperwork you need to do. Um, So check with your school when is orientation. A lot of times there's a fee about orientation that needs to be filled out. Um, This is really uh, an important time for you. This is your contract um, meeting about this is all our resources and programs. It's really overwhelming. So, you know, it's probably not protocol. Find a recorder to record it. Just write some key notes on your notes on your uh, computer because this is a good important find of resources or find who's that one or two people, your go-to people to ask for help. Um, that's so key. It doesn't matter how big or small the school is. And then a lot of times there will be, you know, class of 
Oh my God. Are you the class of 2026, Isabel? I am the class of 2026. Woo! 